All right. Hopefully you did well on your quiz in the last lesson. We just finished going over it in here, and overall students did pretty well. There were some careless mistakes here and there. A few times students want to kick themselves, uh, but overall they did a good job, so I was pleased with that. We're going to go and take a look at your homework now, so if you would have your books open to page 58. Have your books open to page 58. You did the bottom two rows of problems on the page, number 7 through 14 in that homework section. Also, on a sheet of paper, you should have copied your fraction decimal equivalents three times. It was uh, table I on page 56. So if you would go and have that table I out that you copied three times, and I will come by and check all of that. Excelente, excelente, um, excelente, very nice, neat work, good, excellent, very neatly copied there, Ben. Three times? Mm. Oh, at least he did it once. Oh, the pain. pain. All right, we weren't actually supposed to do all of those yet, but you know, that just means you have a jump. And did you copy it three times? Oh, where's your table I? Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. This weekend was not kind to us. All right. Let's see, green slips for every, okay, not everybody. <laughs> all right, make sure we're careful to copy the homework down correctly and then get it all the way finished. I'll come by and collect those green slips from you in a little bit. All right, uh, let's start though by looking at number seven. And the, on page 58 there at the bottom, what did you get for number seven? Sam? Uh, one and two, six. Well, that's not wrong, one and two, six, but we could do even better. One and one third, good. Number eight, Bryson. Uh, two thirds. Two thirds. Number nine, Luciana. One, one third. Say that again. One and one third. On number nine. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what you did. Did you realize it is addition, first of all? But even multiplication shouldn't have given you one and one third. Multiplication would have given you one twenty-seven. That's what that's what kind of has me baffled there. Unless you treat it like a division, you know what? You might have done a division problem. Yes, that's what you did. You treat it like a division problem, and you multiplied by the reciprocal. Okay, that's how you got one and one third. Um, okay, so uh, which is why, by the way, it would have looked so much like number seven. Uh, number nine. What should we have gotten, Corey? Uh, seven eight. 7 18ths. The two ninths needs to be rewritten as 4 18ths, and then we can add to the 3 18ths to get 7 18ths. How about number 10? What did you get when you subtracted, Jalen? 11 18ths. 11 18ths. Number 11, when we added those mixed numbers, Paige? 6 and 5 18ths. 6 and 5 18ths is correct. Uh, number 12, what did you get when you, bless you, subtracted, Griffin? 2 and 2 thousands. 2 and 2 thirds. Number 13, we, quote, divided. We didn't really. We multiplied by the reciprocal. But, um, Elaine, what did you get? 128. 128. And number 14, before you give me the answer, Ben, what kind of fraction is that? It's a complex. It's a complex fraction. It looks nasty. But really, Ben, we know that that fraction bar just tells us to do what? Divide. divide. And we say it says divide, and we like, yeah, I don't do that here. We don't divide fractions, class. What do we do? Multiply. So when you did that, what'd you get for your answer, Ben? 39 over 48. You're not wrong. 39 48 isn't wrong, but we could actually divide something out of top and bottom. If you look at the sum of the digits, they both add up to 12, which is divisible by 3, which means we could divide a 3 out of both of these. And what might we get? Class? 1316. 16. So the real key here, Ben, was to see the canceling when you first multiply by the reciprocal 13 twelfths. The key was to see this canceling, to get the 1 and 4. That we didn't ever get to the big numbers. You would go straight to that there. So watch for the canceling of the 3 and the 12, and that would have gotten us there a little quicker. But not a wrong answer necessarily, just, you know, minus a point for not reducing. Um, anyone perfect on all eight of those? Perfect on all eight? Anyone seven out of eight? Just missed one? Okay, several. Any questions on any of those? All right. Um, let me go ahead and have you look at the uh, back at page, 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 page 55. Everyone's looking at page. Sorry, page. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Um, look at page 55 if you It was a dumb joke. It's a Monday morning. I'm sorry. I just lost three YouTube subscribers. 
All right, um, <laughs> page 55, decimals and fractions. And we talked about decimals and fractions, I believe, in our very first lesson. Remember, I even gave you a worksheet to work on the relationship between decimals and fractions. And we remember that decimals become fractions, right? If I had 0.3, class, its place value is tenths, so it's worth three tenths, three tenths right? And, and vice versa. So if a decimal can be made a fraction, a fraction can be made a decimal as well. And uh, here's the key. If you write this off to the, actually, it's, it's already in bold for you. Just highlight it or put a star next to it. To change a fraction to a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. To change a fraction to a decimal, you see there at the bottom of page 55, in bold, that sentence there, to change a fraction to a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. In other words, just remember fraction bar means divide. Just remember fraction bar means divide. So we divide. Look at the next page now, page 56. Look at example uh, 1.11a. They give you the example of 3 eighths. Well, what does the fraction bar mean, class? Divide. divide. So literally, class, we could read this, listen, 3 divided by 8. Let me say it again. 3 divided by 8. Now here's the question. If I were to set this up with a division house, which one goes in the house class? The 3. The three. And then the 8 would go outside. How might we remember this? How many, any military family in here? Any military families? All right. How many have ever heard of like the guy at the top? You ever heard that phrase, so-and-so is the guy at the top? You ever never heard that phrase? At the top just means he's at the top of the chain of command. He's the most important. He's got all the power and all the authority. Ever heard of the, the, the little guy, the guy at the bottom? Okay, the guy at the bottom is like the buck private. Okay, he just enlisted. He has no authority whatsoever. All he does is obey everything everybody tells him to do. Okay? And then the guy at the top, of course, would be like the general. And, of course, there's different ranks in between. All right? So here's the deal. Let's suppose there was a, uh, a party or something or, or a ball. I know the military does military balls from time to time. And uh, guess who gets invited to the military balls? All the guys at the top. And guess who has to stand guard outside and doesn't get any, any of the fun? The guy at the bottom. All right, so you ready for this? There's the house. Inside the house is the party. The top dog, the top brass, the top guy, he's in the house at the party. The guy at the bottom, he has to stand guard outside. Make sense? Or you can just remember that 3 divided by 8 would be written 3 divided by 8. I mean, that's a boring way to remember it, but whatever works for you. Here's the problem. Can 8 go into 3 class? No. So you already know this because we did this before. We have to put a decimal. We have to annex or add on some zeros. And we don't forget to put the decimal up top. How many times does 8 go into 30 class? 3. three almost 4. 3 times 20, three times 8 would be class 24, which leaves us with 6 left over. We'll bring that down. How many times 8 go into 60? Seven times. Seven times eight would be 56, which leaves us with four, four left over. Bring down another zero. How many times eight go into 40? Five. five times. What's five times eight? Hey, we're done. And there's our answer. So we can turn a fraction into a decimal by simply dividing the top by the bottom. But remember, the top dog is in the house. Okay, the top brass is in the house. The bottom guy, he stands guard outside. Look at the next example. They give us five, six. Well, we want to figure out what the decimal is. We set up our division house. Class, who goes in the house? Five. The five, because he's the top guy. Top guy, the guy at the top. He goes in the house. Who stands guard outside? Six. The guy at the bottom, okay? Because he, he doesn't get to have any fun. All right, uh, he has to work his way up. Okay, we'll add on some zeros here. Six goes into 50, class. Eight, Eight times, because that's 48. 48. Leaves me with Ten. two left over. Six goes into 20. Three, Three times, because that's... 18. 18 leaves me with two, two left over. So six goes into 20. Three. Three. Wait a second. And that's going to be another 18, right? It's going to give me another two. So if I add in zero, it's going to be another. Do you see what's going to keep happening in class? We're just going to keep getting a three. And the way we can show it, I think we reviewed this once before, is we can just put a bar over the digit that repeats. And we'll say 0 0.83 repeating. Questions on that? Get out a little uh, sheet of paper, if you would. Uh, get out a sheet of paper, and let's do this one now. 7 over 6. 7 over 6. Let's turn that into a decimal. 7 6. Let's turn that into a decimal. First of all, we need to set it up as a division problem. So we're going to draw our division house. Who goes inside the house, Luciana? 
top brass who stands guard outside. The guy at the bottom. And we need to add on class some zeros after the decimal point. So put point zero, zero, zero. Don't forget the decimal up top as well. Class, can six go into seven? Yes. This time it can. Because it's an improper fraction, we're going to get something bigger than one. So yes, six does go into seven one time with how many left over? Let's, let's review short division, shall we? How many times does six go into, I'm going to put the one right here. How many times does six go into 10? Mm -hmm. One with how many left over? Four. Four. How many times does six go into 40? Six. Because that's how much? 36. 36. Okay, so how many left over? Four. Four more. How many times does six go into 40? Six. Six. How many is going to be left over? Four. Four. Do you see what's going to keep happening? Now notice, class, it's just the six that's going to repeat. So I'm going to put a line just over the six. And there's my answer, 1.16 repeating. Do we see how to turn the fraction into the decimal? Mm -hmm. Write this one down, 9 25ths. 9 25ths. Let's turn this into a decimal and tell me what to write. Jalen? Um, write 25 on the outside and 9 on the inside. Then what do I need to do, Michael? Maybe add the decimal and then put 0. And then uh, 25 can go in the 9 and do 1, so you add 75. Like that? Couple things I would say that I would have done a little differently here. I would have added not just a decimal and one zero, I'd put a few zeros just to give myself some room because I don't, I don't want to keep adding zeros later. The other big thing that we forgot to do, class, decimal. make sure when you put the decimal here, don't forget to also put it over the top. Okay, but otherwise you're not wrong, we just need to do a couple more things. Uh, what is, someone figured out real quick, 90 minus 75? 15. 15, good. We'll bring down the next zero. And uh, think money, class, how many quarters are in a buck 50? Six. Six quarters, evenly, right? That's exactly 150, isn't it? And so this decimal doesn't repeat. It just comes out nice and evenly, 0.36. Seem pretty easy? Write this one down. We'll do one more together. Write this fraction down. Three elevenths. Three elevenths. Griffin, what do I need to write to set this up? The three inside the... Multiplication. Or division and house. Division. <laughs> and then the 11 outside. Good. What else? Decimal behind the three, then a few zeros. And divide the 11. Before we do that, one more thing. Class? Decimal, decimal up top. top. Don't forget the decimal up top. Okay, now we do say how many times does 11 go into 30? And how many times, class? Twice. Only twice, right? Three would be 33. It's too big for that. Two would be. You might be able to do this in your head and get eight. eight. How many times 11 go into 80? Seven. seven. That's 77, which leaves me with three to bring down the zero. How many times 11 go into 30? Two. Two. Wait a second. That's going to be 22, isn't it? Going with an eight, which if I added another zero, means 11 would go in how many times? Seven. What's happening, class? Repeating. What's repeating? Two the two and the seven, right? Not just the two, not just the seven. So now we're going to put a bar over both the 2 and the 7. And this is 0.27 repeating. Questions on that? Do you remember going over this earlier in the year? Just want to make sure we're refreshed. Right? Question? Can you do like three dots at the end? Well, the three dots just, just means it keeps going. Right? Dot, dot, dot means it keeps going. It doesn't necessarily imply it has to repeat. So the bar actually indicates it is definitely repeating. Yeah, good question. So we want to use that bar to show the repeatingness, repetition. All right, what if I wanted to turn the decimal into the fraction? Well, I looked at this already. If I had, for instance, a decimal, 0.43. Well, think about place value. Class, what is the last digit's place value? Three. The three is in which place? Seven. Not the tenths. This is the tenths. This is the hundreds. hundreds. So just look at the last digit's place value. This class would be written as 43 hundredths. Make sense? So just apply place value. What if I had... Um, 0.0102. Now think for just a minute. What is the last 
digit's place value? Hands. What is the last digit's place value? Hmm, Bryson? I thought I saw a hand. Maybe I didn't. Sam? Not the hundred thousands, Ben. The ten thousands. Stay with me, class. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So we're going to put this over ten thousand. And what do I write over the ten thousands? Uh, Bryson, back to you. Two. Not just the two, the whole number up here. Except, do I really need to write the first zero, class? No. So I'm just going to write one hundred two. Because 0, 1, 0, 2 means 102, right? So leading zeros don't need to be copied, but we're at 102, 10,000. Does that make sense? Uh, what if I had uh, 0. 0. 0.008? What would I write for my fraction, Sam? 8 over 1,000. Now, one little detail though, class. We always do what to our fractions? Reduce. Reduce. What can I divide out of top and bottom, class? Two. A two. What do I get if I divide 102 by two? 51. 51. What do I get if I divide 10,000 by two? 5,000. 5, and it doesn't reduce anymore, so we're done. Coming over here, what can I divide out of eight and 10,000? Two. Two. Now, actually, I could divide even more than a two. I could divide a four, couldn't I? But two might be easier for us. Let's just go with two. Divide eight by two to get. And a thousand divided by two. 500. Now let's divide by two again. And what is half of $500? $250. I can still divide by two. What's half of two? And what's 250 divided by two? 125. And there's our reduced fraction. That's the only element to which we didn't already do earlier in the year. Before, I had purposely worked fractions like this that never reduced. Now they may turn out to fractions that could reduce. But do we understand how to go back and forth? If you're given a decimal and you want a fraction class, just think place value. Class, given a decimal, need a fraction, just apply place value. Given a fraction and need a decimal, what do we have to do, class? Divide. divide. Give it a fraction, you need a decimal class, you've got to divide. divide. Now, there is a shortcut we could use, though, because there are some fractions class we are going to see a lot. Let me say this, listen carefully, over the next six years, you're going to see a lot of fractions, a certain set of fractions, which you will see a lot over the next six years. You will save yourself a lot of time and trouble over the next six years if you'll just memorize these. Now, some of these, how many as you look at table I on page 56, you say, I memorized these in elementary school. I've already got these down. Some of you do. How many say, I have not memorized these? You're going to need to, okay? It'll help you not just in this section. It'll help you all year. It'll help you next year. It'll help you even, you say, even in algebra? Yeah, even in algebra. It'll help to have these memorized. Even in geometry, in fact, a lot in geometry, even in pre-calculus, it'll help you to have these fractions memorized as decimals. Well, let's take a look here. Look at table I. Look at the first column at the bottom of the page. By the way, put a big star next to this. Put a big star next to the chart and write memorize. Put a big star next to the chart and write memorize. So whenever you're tempted to flip back and look it up because you don't remember, You'll be reminded, oh yeah, I'm supposed to memorize these. It wouldn't hurt you, by the way, to make little flashcards. We, I've got big flashcards that we're going to go over here in a minute to drill through these in practice, but it wouldn't hurt you to use maybe three by five cards, four by six cards. If you're a tight wad, cut the three by five cards in half and get two cards for the price of one. Uh, but anyway, um, to make some flashcards and drill yourselves on these. I want to look at the table with you, though. Notice the first column. Just put a dollar sign underneath the column. Put a dollar sign. Because what is one quarter class? 25 cents. So if you can remember a quarter, remember that's another way to say a fourth, right? A quarter. A quarter pounder is a fourth of a pound, right? How many, like a quarter pounder with cheese? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyway, it's, it's not even a quarter pound anymore. They, should, they still call it that. And they anyway, uh, but a quarter is 25 cents. Three quarters class is how much money? 75, 75 cents. What's half a dollar? 
50 cents. Now notice, we don't put the zero after the 0.5 because we're lazy, but if you just think money, that first column should be easy. Would we not agree? First column's not going to be where the memory troubles are. Look at the next column. Notice the denominator is 5. If I wanted to make equivalent fractions, are you listening? I could make them tenths. Tenths is one decimal place, right? One fifth becomes two tenths, right? So hence, point two. Two fifths class is point four. Three fifths is point six. Four fifths is point eight. Do you see all we're doing is doubling the numerator and putting it in the tenth spot? So if the denominator is five, just write this down, double. Write the word double under the second column. Because that's all you really have to do is double the numerator. Anytime you see a denominator of five. Okay, denominator five. Let's skip the next column. That's going to be the hard one. Okay, we're going to skip the next column for just a minute. I want to go all the way to the last column, actually. One ninth is point one 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 four point one repeating. Two ninths point two 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 or point two repeating. Four ninths is point four 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 or point four repeating. So plus what would be five ninths? Point five repeating. What would be seven ninths? What would be eight ninths? Anything over nine is itself repeating. Almost. What about three ninths? What would that have to be then, class? Point three repeating. But we don't normally write three ninths, do we? What would we write? One third. One third. Do you see why on the previous column one third has to be point three repeating? Because it's three ninths. We wouldn't normally write this as six ninths, but class, if we did, what would six ninths be? Well, we would normally write it as two, but it'd be 0. 0.6 repeating, and that's why two thirds is 0. 0.6 repeating. Does that make sense? Because they're just doing ninths, we just reduce the fractions down. So that might also help you to remember one third 0. 0.3 repeating and two thirds 0. 0.6 repeating. Does that help? So just remember ninths, the numerator repeats indefinitely. Now, there's a few hard ones on here, admittedly. The first one that we see is the one sixth, but one sixth point one six repeating. Here's your one. There's your fraction bar. There's your six. You can kind of see the one sixth and the point one six repeating. Is that? Do you kind of see it? So you can use that to kind of help you remember. Now, unfortunately, for five six, I got none. It's point eight three repeating, and there's no help in that whatsoever. So put a star next to five six, and just know this is one that's going to take more effort. You're gonna have to work at that one. Maybe it means you have to write it ten times. Maybe just be like, I just cannot remember five six point eight three repeating. Like every time I, let me say this really slowly. Every time I drill myself on these at home, wink wink nudge nudge, I keep forgetting this one. Well, if it's one you keep forgetting, write it down ten times. After that, your hand will hurt and you'll remember, okay? Because you'll associate it with negative emotion, all right? And we remember things we attach emotion to. Now, the eighths, the eighths. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if this is going to help you or not. I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to tell you what I use, but my brain is weird, okay? I'm a math teacher, which naturally means my brain is different from everybody else's on the planet, okay? So this may be absolutely no help, but here's how I remember it. Look at the last two digits on the eighths column, that middle column. So he goes 25, 75, 25, 75. So I kind of remember that part of it. And then I remember 1 8 has a 1 at the beginning, 3 8 has a 3 at the beginning. But those are the little guys, right? Those are all little. That's all less than half. When we get to bigger, like half would be 4 8 We all understand that, right? Half is 4 8 just so we're all speaking the same language. Once you go bigger than half, you have to round up. So the 5 8 bumps up to a point 6, 2 5. And the 7 8 bumps up to a point 8. 7, 5. That's literally how I remember it. That may not help you at all. Okay, if not, you find a way that helps you remember it. Maybe it's <laughs> writing it 10 times. Uh, but you find a way that helps you remember those different decimals. All right? Questions on these? Let's go ahead and drill these. If you would stand beside your desk, we're going to just go through the table. We're going to go down one column at a time, saying them together. Stand beside your desk. And we're just going to go down column by column. Have your book ready. If you can read it from your desk, great. If you need to have it open uh, in your hand like I do, do that. Starting with one fourth. One fourth equals 0.25. Okay, I thought we, we caught on after a minute. Let, let's try it from the beginning now. One fourth equals 0.25. 
One half equals 0.5. Three-fourths equals 0.75. If you're watching on video, by the way, you can also stand and say these with us. It would be a shame for you to fail on this and everyone in here succeeds, so make sure you're also following along. Let's go to the next column. One-fifth equals 0.2. Two-fifths equals 0.4. Three-fifths equals 0.6. Four-fifths equals 0.8. Now we get to the hard ones. One-eighth equals 0.125. 3 eighths equals 0.375. 5 eighths equals 0.625. 7 eighths equals 0.875. 1 sixth equals 0.16 repeating. 1 third equals 0.3 repeating. 2 thirds equals 0.6 repeating. 5 sixth equals 0.83 repeating. 1 ninth equals 0.1 repeating. 2 ninths equals 0.2 repeating, 4 ninths equals 0.4 repeating. Good, have a seat. By the way, the whole reason they did three of them was just to make sure you noted the pattern, okay? Um, really, you need to know all the eight, all the ninths, right, is that digit repeating. I want you to look across the page now. Do one through 11. Numbers one through eight, if you can do it without looking back, great. If you need to look back across the page, that's okay. But for numbers nine through 11, you're gonna have to actually do the division to get them. One through eight, these are ones that either are memorized or will be memorized. Nine through 11, work them out. Doing page 57, one through 11 at your seats. early. Spend a few minutes looking over the chart silently, thrilling them. Or if you wanted to, you could use that time to make flashcards. If you happen to randomly have 3 by 5 cards with you in math class, not sure why you would, but if you happen to, stranger things have happened. number 11. By the way, if they give you an improper fraction, write it as a mixed number first, and then you'll see the memorized fraction decimal equivalent. So 1 through 8 should be memorized, or we are working on memorizing.
few people already finished. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to get these 11 problems done. One more minute. Be finishing these up. Pencil stamp, even if you're not finished with all of these. Number one, it says six twelfths, but class, we know that really means what? One half. One half, which we should have memorized or are memorizing, is? Point five. Point five. Three fifths, we are memorizing or have memorized, but it is? Point six. Point six. One sixth becomes? Point one six repeating. Point one six repeating. Just the six repeats, remember, so a bar only over the six. Uh, two ninths we'll have memorized is? Point two repeating. Point two repeating. Six and one ninth. Well, ignore the six for a minute. What's one ninth, class? Point one, point one repeat. But well, what if there's a six and one ninth? Well, what is the decimal read? And, right? Six point one repeating. Does that make sense? So the six goes in front of the decimal. You have all of the six, and you have a point one repeating. So you have six point one repeating. How many got that? How many put the six after the decimal? I saw a couple of those. Okay, so yeah, 6.1 repeating. Two thirds we have memorized is? Point seven eighths we are working to memorize is? Point eight seven five. Four thirds? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't do improper here. So four thirds class should be rewritten as a, as a mixed number. One and one third. One and one third, right? Well, hold on now. What is one third as a decimal? Point three repeating. Point three repeating. And we also have a one, so class, we should have 1.3 1. 1. repeating for our answer on number eight. How many got that one? All right, good, several of you. By the way, what if, what if on a quiz, I know Kirsten, you've never memorized these before, right? Never had to, and that's a lot, right? It's a lot to try to memorize, but you're gonna work really hard, you're gonna try to get there. But let's suppose she forgets one. Or maybe one of you, I mean, you've got these memorized and your mind just goes blank. What do you do? Divide. Do what we're about to do on 9 through 11, right? You can always fall back on division. The point is mathematicians are lazy. lazy. We don't want to do a lot. Let's face it. Of all the things, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, what do we hate the most? Divide. Divide. We hate division. It takes forever, right? And we're lazy. So let's memorize some things that will save us from having to do the division. But if you had to 
you could do the division. Now, on number nine, we have to. We're not, we can't memorize every single fraction decimal, right? So this is one we're not memorizing. But I can set it up as a division problem. What goes inside the house, class? Seven. What goes outside? 20. 20. How many times does 20 go into 70? Three times, because that's how much? 60. That gives us 10, bring that to zero. How many times does 20 go into 100? Five. And that's going to be even, isn't it? Think five $20 bill. Anyone ever seen five? That's good thing. Anyway, I, I would like five $20 bills if anyone just had that laying around. Point three five. how many got that for number nine? Uh, number 10, we have four fifteenths. Well, I'm going to set up my division class. Inside the house, I put the? One. Outside the house, I put the? Fifteen. And of course, I'm going to put my point zeros in a decimal up here. Fifteen goes into 40 Two. twice, because that's 30, isn't it? Subtract it up 10. Ugh, how many times does 15 go into 100? Um, I heard somebody say six. Let's try it. What's six times five? Three. Carry the three. Six times one plus three? Nine. Hey, that works. All right. If it hadn't worked, try a different number. If you tried five and it only gave you 75, for instance. Well, when you subtract, you get 25. That's too big. Ten is just right. So we bring down a zero. And then how many times 15 go into 100? This seems like deja vu, doesn't it? How many times does 15 go into 100, class? Six. We just did that, didn't we? And it gave us a nine. What's going to happen? How many got point two six repeating? Where just the six repeats. Uh, look at the next one. We have five twelfths. What goes in the house? Five. What goes outside? Twelve. twelve. I put point zero zero zero. Put the point up top. How many times does twelve go to fifty? Four. Four times. How much is that? Forty eight. Forty eight. Let's subtract. Get a two. two. Bring down a zero. How many times twelve go to twenty? One. 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 So that's twelve. That gives me what? Eight. eight. Okay, that's an eighty. I haven't seen this before. Nothing's repeating yet. Did you notice that? How many times twelve go to eighty? Six. Six. Yeah, not quite seven. Six times twelve is uh, seventy-two. Seventy-two. Let's subtract at least with eight. Eight. Bring down a zero. How many times twelve go to eighty? Ah, what's going to happen? Repeat. The six is going to repeat. So point four one six repeating. How many had that? Four number eleven. Questions on how to make fractions into decimals. But again, ideally, we've got many of these memorized. Let's flip through some of these real quick. Say it with me. We're going to say what's on the card. We're going to say what it's equal to. We'll see what we can remember. One half equals 0.5. That was good and strong, 0.5. One fourth equals 0.25. Still really strong, 0.25. Three fourths equals 0.75. Good. One fifth equals 0.25. Oh, careful. Oh, oh. Back, backtrack. Okay, so the one-fifth, remember, is just the point two. We just double the numerator here on the one-fifth. All right, so two-fifths would be class point four. four. Say this one. Three-fifths Three equals point six. Four-fifths four four equals point eight. All right, here we get to the hard ones. One-eighth one equals point one two five. five. Let's say it again. One-eighth one equals point one two five. All right, now remember, that was a point one, two, five. So this one's going to be 3 eighths equals point three seven five. So remember, it alternates to the 75, and we keep the 3. Now we're going bigger than half, remember. 5 eighths equals point six two five. So we bump it up to a 6, and we're back to the 25 again. One more time. 5 eighths equals point six two five. 7 eighths equals 0.875. Again, we bump it up to an 8, and we're out now to the 75. 25, 75, 25, 75. If that helps. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. 1 third equals 0.3 repeating. Remember, 1 third is 3 ninths, so it'll be 0.3 repeating. 2 thirds equals 0.6 repeating. It's double the 0.3 repeating, or you can think of 6 ninths, 0.6 repeating. Here's a fun one. One sixth equals point one six repeating. Again, the six repeats, not the one. And then this is to me the hardest one. Five sixth equals point eight three repeating. Again, five sixth equals point eight three repeating. And then four ninths equals point four repeating. All right, we'll play some review games in the days ahead for those watching on video. I'm sorry, maybe you can get your mom or dad or maybe a proctor in a classroom with you to make some flashcards and to flip through those with you. Uh, or you can make the flashcards yourself and have the instructor flip through those with you. Turn over now if you want to page 58. Page 58. And in the homework section, we only did 7 through 14. I want you to do 1 through 6 right now. Page 58 in the homework section, do numbers 1 through 6. Some of these are memorized, 
Some of these are division problems. For sake of time, pencils down. Um, more of these than not actually had to be worked out, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, number one, though, four ninths class. Four 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 point four, four repeating. Four. Nine twenty fifths, we had to work that one out. Should have gotten what then? Point three six. Point three six. What about number three, the eleven twentieths? Bryson. So point five five. Point five five. Number four was a fun one. Five elevenths. What did that come to? Elaine? Point four five repeating. Point four five with both digits repeating. So the line went over the four and the five. Uh, what about the seven fifteenths? What about that one? Right, uh, Corey, you got that one, seven fifteenths? Uh, point four six repeating. Point four six repeating with just the six. And then uh, number six came out evenly. Nine and twentieths came to what, Bryson? Point five, four, 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 four. Point four five is correct. All right, your homework for this evening. First, work on memorizing your fraction decimal equivalents. You've recopied them three times, or you're going to tonight. You've got them three times. Maybe make some flashcards, do something, drill yourself, make sure you've got those memorized. Also, pages 63 to 64. Pages 63 to 64, some review homework. Do numbers 35 to 52. Pages 63 to 64. Do numbers 35 to 52. All right, you are dismissed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.